Hello everyone, uh, my name is E. I'm on the Google Chrome team. Today I'm going to show you a uh, API that we have been working on for a while. It's used to reduce user friction uh, during phone number verification. All right, so uh, what's OTP? OTP, like a one-time passwords, uh, is widely used for phone number verifications. For example, two-factor authentication. Uh, when you're trying to log in on some website, you need to provide your username, your password, and if you're enrolled SMS as two-factor authentication, uh, you have to. You also need to uh, kind of like provide an OTP. The, like the site send you a message, and you go to the SMS, get a code, and provide the code back to the website. If it matches the one they send out, okay, it's a match. Uh, so they verify it's you. Now you can, you know, you're signing. So that's pretty much like how it works uh, for the SMS verification. And uh, it's widely used. And what's the problem here? Here's an example. So you get the message, right? You go to the message app, kind of memorize the code, come back to Chrome, and then start to type. And one, two, three, four, oops, or uh, typo. And uh, what was it again? You have to go back to the message app, come back, back and forth, right? As you can see, it's, it's a lot of user friction here. So uh, lots of room for improvement. So we provided, <laughs> so we provided the WebOTP API. Basically, uh, when you're uh, expecting a message, and you get the message, will show a prompt on, on, at the bottom. And the user just tap that one button to allow Chrome to feed the code for the users, and then it's done. Very convenient, it's one type experience. It's also backwards comp compatible with existing user behavior and the developer infrastructure. And this feature was launched in 84, and the API is very easy to use. The developer just need to call this uh, JavaScript API, API and they also need to send out SMS uh, with specific format. For example, the first line could be any you know, optional uh, explanatory uh, text. And the second line or the last line start with a S sign and the domain and the code, something like that. It's very simple to use. Since we launched it, we have been uh, seeing uh, lots of significant improvements uh, on partner stats, basically uh, fewer or shorter signing time, more successful signing users, in general, we are saving hundreds of user hours on a daily basis, and we are really proud of it. OK, uh, that's good stuff. There are some challenges around the, the initial uh, launch. For example, the Android Native prompt, as you can see from the bottom right. This prompt is from Android Native. So that means it may persist across apps or tabs. For example, you're in the Messages app, waiting for a message. And then when your message arrives, we show the prompt. And uh, it's a pretty intrusive prompt. Or if you're on a different tab, we also show the prompt. So arguably, it's not a very good user experience. That's one problem. Another one being, like, uh, to show the prompt, Android has to parse the SMS. And the parsing logic is not very well like, spec compliant. It works most cases, but there are some edge cases it doesn't, you know, it doesn't cover. So that's another issue. And since it's native, and when we uh, encounter some bugs, it's really hard to come up with a fix from the browser side. So to solve that, we uh, have been collaborated with the GMS team to uh, implement a new uh, Google Play Service API. And it can better support the uh, specification with a Chrome uh, managed prompt. With that, we get something like this. Basically, uh, if a user is visiting a site which calls the WebOTP API on their default browser for the first time, Enjoy will ask users, do you uh, to allow the browser to help you to fill in SMS OTP, something like that? Of course, users can always uh, update their change uh, settings in the system setting. But let's see the user uh, grant this permission. And from then on, in the future, uh, when the SMS arrives, they don't see this uh, for one-time native prompt. Instead, Chrome will show a new prompt. It's Chrome managed with customized context, like the purpose, the uh, the origin, and uh, the code, such that the user can make in an informative decision to allow Chrome to fill the code for them to assist them with the uh, you know, OTP verification process. There are two notes here. Uh, first one, the one-time permission on the left can be bypassed if the default browser is allowed listed by the Play Service. Like Chrome users won't see this prompt. 
so they only see the second prompt when the SMS arrives. And on that end, on the second note, when the browser has access to the OTP, to the code, it doesn't necessarily need to show a prompt. So Chrome does. Chrome shows this prompt to notify user to ask for permission. But instead, a browser can choose to uh, a different solution. For example, uh, the, when a user starts to type in the input field, or they focus in the input field, browser can choose to show a drop down with a code such that the user can you know click the drop down with the code, fill in the code, submit the form. So that's another you know solution uh, once the browser has access to the code. Uh, okay, that's the way uh, the way we uh, kind of address those concerns, the challenges. Another challenge is uh, in the initial launch, uh, the WebOTP API only works on top frames, which means some payments related partners they basically cannot use it because they're mostly embedded as the cross or origin iframe on the you know shopping uh, website. And uh, for example, when the shop.com, for example, they embed this payment.com as the iframe and for, for fast checkout. And during checkout, the, the iframe, the, the payment website, you're going to uh, try to verify the phone number. But it cannot use a web OTP API because it's not supported. So let's, let, let's fix that. And uh, we made some changes to the API. And nowadays, users uh, or developers can do two things. First, uh, they need to, on the top frame, they need to explicitly allow the iframe to use the web OTP API for security reasons. And the iframe or the payment website, they need to send out the SMS to the users, right? And they also need, in addition to their own origin, they also need to include the embedder's origin or the top frame's origin. So the message goes like, like this. It's like add sign, top frame, the code, the iframe, something like that. With that, we have this. There is the iframe embedded in, in the center. When a user grants permission, you can see OTP successfully submitted in the iframe. So this is how it worked, uh, it looks like. And this feature was launched in 91. It's in beta, but it will be in, uh, in stable, like momentarily. This is another challenge. Uh, one more challenge. Uh, no surprise, we're living in the challenge world, so lots of challenges. Cross-device support. Uh, we have seen a high demand of verifying OTP on desktop or laptop included. Like you're shopping on your laptop, but then all of a sudden you need to go to your phone to memorize the code, come back, enter the code. It's normal, but let's see what we can do there to improve the, the user experience. So we propose a very simple solution. It's like when a user uh, makes a request on the uh, on desktop, they get a message on the phone. So they do some interactions on the phone, and uh, all of a sudden they're kind of like auto like verified on desktop very smoothly. You might be like, hmm, I'm, I don't know. It's like, can you show me more like details? Uh, yes, I can, and I will. Uh, notably, like a user has to sign in on both devices with the same credential. That's how we sync the, the information. And let's just start from the uh, the left, where the, that's the, where the user journey starts. Uh, users on Chrome desktop, if they have multiple signing accounts, Currently, we'll just go to the, the active account. We don't allow users to select which account they want to use. And they start to wait for the SMS. Well, some users, they may have multiple linked devices or phone numbers with the same account. And for, uh, you know, because there are some like tricky timing issues here, we do not allow users to select which phone. We just go to the first available one in their uh, account. Now the, the SMS arrives on the phone, we need to ask a user for permission. Here is something interesting. Uh, Two-factor authentication, uh, basically the first factor is something, something is called something you know, basically your password. The second factor being something you have, like your phone or your uh, like, like email or your biometric, something like that. Currently, we ask you, we can either ask users to verify on desktop or on Android. And we just, for privacy reasons, we decide to ask user permission on Android. Uh, because we want to show them, OK, this user indeed has the phone. OK, now let's on the phone pass. And uh, the next decision we need to make is, like, do we allow users to interact when the phone is locked? Well, uh, once again, for security uh, proof that the user has access to the phone. That's not the decision we made. 
Okay, now that the phone is unlocked, we just show a user a notification to ask them whether they want uh, a Chrome to uh, sync the OTP back to desktop or back to the, uh, the, the website. And upon user grant that permission, the, uh, the verification flow succeeded. Okay, that's a lot of content, I agree. And let's do it in an array. So now a user is trying to verify themselves on desktop, right? If you look at the, the left, uh, let's it'll start over, let's start from, okay. Now, now we send the notification on, on mobile, a user unlock the phone, tap the notification to grant permission, and then on desktop, the verification flow just succeed and the OTP is sent back to the uh, developer. It's very smooth. As you can see, it took, it took me like 20-ish like minute uh, seconds to explain the flow, but it only took like less than 10 seconds for it to really happen. It's very convenient, very smooth. And one thing that's worth mentioning is like, this is Google Prompt. Basically, if you're trying to log in your uh, Gmail account, you can trigger this prompt instead of using your password. And it will trigger a prompt on your phone. And once you unlock the phone, you will see a notification. You tap yes. And on desktop, you're automatically signed in and navigated away to uh, a different site. It's very similar to our proposal. And this is happening in Google Chrome prompts. It's, it's uh, some, something Google uh, accounts team is using. OK, back to our feature. Uh, there's some caveats to use this cross device feature. Uh, one is signing is required. Like I mentioned, you have to sign in. But you don't, you don't need to turn on sync. Another one is like this feature is currently based on sharing and Chrome Sync, which is kind of like Chrome only. And we're exploring, you know, opportunity in the future to make to make sure to, to see whether we can we can do better, but currently it's Chrome only. Okay, the status of this uh, project. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing I want to mention is like that's one solution, right? And we acknowledge that there are other solutions in the wild to handle the cross device feature. For example, this is Safari's solution. Uh, if a user has turned on SMS auto sync, meaning all the messages re they receive on their iPhone are automatically forwarded to a Mac without incurring permissions. Keep that in mind, if it, the user do that, when they try to verify themselves on a Mac, they get a message on the phone and the uh, the message sent, uh, sent to the uh, uh, Mac, and they don't see any prompt. They just see a uh, input field. When the user focuses onto the field, they see a, a drop down, as you can see from there. And the user just like click that drop down to fill in the code, and then they can submit the form to finish the process. Uh, this is a good solution, and there are pros and cons around this solution. So we're uh, working internally to see to try to find the best user experience for this cross device feature. Status, uh, seriously. Uh, currently, this one is, uh, this feature is in dev trial. We're uh, trying to gather feedback from partners. And like I said, we're also in discussion with some internal teams to uh, explore better UX for this feature. Uh, give it a try. I mean, it's available. It's available in 91 behind a flag or a list of flags. Uh, you can find the detailed instruction here. And if you have any uh, questions or suggestions regarding this feature, a cross device feature, or the general web OTP, feel free to, to contact me and uh, happy to help, happy to learn. Thank you. What does our uh, what does adoption look like for um, for use for picking up a OTP um, on uh, say like financial sites? You know, I would love to 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 not have to to manually grab my phone and copy copy the code. You know, when I log into my bank on desktop, are mm -hmm. are partners interested in this, or are they looking at this and you know thinking about this the same way they think about like disabling password managers and thinking this is going to make their their OTP codes less secure and are going to try to opt themselves out of it. Uh, we do have some like partners, like uh, for example, uh, Shopify. 
that they have a shop pay uh, as a you know embedded as an uh, cross origin iframe are is interested in this feature. And we also from the data from the data we have, we, we see some like uh, banks from India uh, are adopting this feature. But we are not in uh, contact to ask their, you know, their 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 uh, feedback, and just like we're, we do notice some uh, adoptions, but I don't think there are some like discussions or conversations around the questions you uh, you're interested in. And uh, one thing is like, I'm not sure that they they have, because we are we are trying to like uh, allocating for for RepoDP, but we also uh in like for example like, like Chrome developer uh as a cds uh submit we also suggest users to to consider other measures for example web of then and web dp for different scenarios for different security levels right i think uh, we are trying to uh, help developers to make the right decisions to use the, the right features Any other questions? So um, I have a question about the um, permission request for reading messages. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, um, is Chrome is Chrome going to read all the messages or some of the messages or? Just a good question. Uh, with the uh, current native prompt, it will show like to allow Chrome to read the whole SMS. We show the raw SMS, and I think the answer is yes. And with the new uh, UI, Android only expose the last line, which starts with S sign basically assign origin and the code to the browser, which is not the, 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 the other products about the SMS. And we only, in either cases, we only expose to the browser relevant SMS. So basically, if you're receiving another message, which is not SMS OTP related, the browser will know. It must have the assign origin code for the browser, for Android to uh, you know parse it and then send it to, 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 to the browser. Just, just to clarify, it's only the last SMS, basically the SMS that Android thinks includes that OTP code. So it doesn't, Chrome doesn't get to read all of your SMSs. It's like an Android API that only gives you the SMS that includes an OTP. And with the new API, it's even more restricted. So we only get the last line in the SMS. Okay, thank you. Great. If there's no more questions, I think we can like call it and uh, give people like four minutes back. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>